Welcome, Bell Buckle United Methodist Church. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's a beautiful sunny day, and we're going to have a great time in worship. I pray that you will be blessed as uh, we go through our time together. Just a couple of things I want to make known to our congregation uh, that today at 1 o'clock there is a special call Zoom Council Meeting. You should be receiving a link to uh, join the meeting this afternoon at 1 o'clock. Uh, Craig Johnson, our chair, has called that meeting, so please be, in, uh, please be there if you can. If you do not get a Zoom link, please contact Craig Johnson uh, immediately, if you would, please. Uh, other things that uh, are coming up, there's a food drop that's going to be happening here in our church facilities on May the 30th, and you'll be hearing more about that in the days to come. But we want all hands on deck, so please put that on your calendar. We need to be here at the church at 8 a.m. so we can prepare uh, to, to have the food distribution. Those are the two things I want to make known. Uh, we have a number of other things that are going to be happening uh, coming up in June, and you'll be hearing more about that uh, in the coming weeks as well. Let's move on to our prayer requests. Uh, just to let everyone know, our pastor is on vacation, so Brother Nolan is not here. Uh, Brother Elijah Collard will be bringing our message uh, this morning, and you'll be hearing from him shortly. And Jason will be bringing our vision statement uh, in just a few minutes. Our prayer request, I want to make known that uh, Zach Royston uh, needs, your, needs our prayers. Zach um, is in the hospital. Uh, he, uh, I think they said he had a stroke, but he's doing better. He seems to be doing well now and hopes to come home uh, in the next day or so. So please keep Zach Royston in your prayers. Ray Shivers family, please continue to remember them. We greatly miss Ray and uh, we love him and love the family. Remember our church family, those that are our older church members who are still uh, staying at home and staying safe. Please remember to contact them, call them, go by and, and check on them at a safe distance. But we want to continue to remember those in our church that are not out and about at this point. And there's others, if there's other uh, church needs that you have, please contact our church office or our pastor uh, or myself uh, or Craig Johnson, and we'll be happy to continue to put those on the prayer list in the days to come. It's a joy to uh, be in this beautiful sanctuary. I thank God and I praise God for the work that has been done. Uh, hopefully in the weeks to come we'll all get together in and see the work that has been done. But that's a prayer of thanks that I have. And the joy that uh, this place has brought me over the years and brought all of our people so much joy in worship. The Lord is here. The Lord is good. And the Lord is still providing. Thank you for your gifts and your tithes and offerings. We give praise for that as we continue to do ministry at uh, Bell Buckle United Methodist Church. Let's take a moment and pray together. Our Father God, we give you praise and we give you adoration for who you are. You're the great King, the great Lord of all, and we give you praise for who you are. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the prayers that have been answered. Thank you for the protection that has been given to us. And we continue to pray for these that have been made known. We thank you for healing where healing is needed. We thank you for the comfort where comfort is needed. And we thank you for those that serve you here in this place who serve around the world in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We give you praise for the first responders, for our doctors and nurses on the front line that are uh, helping fight this, this uh, dreaded virus. Thank you for their dedication. And we pray for protection for them and their families. We pray for protection for our elderly and the shut-ins of our church. We pray that your will would be done in everything that we say and do. In the name and power of Jesus Christ, we give you praise and we give you adoration. In his name I pray. Amen. 
Jason, would you come and share with us a vision for 2024? Yes, thank you, David. My vision for Bell Boca United Methodist Church in 2024 is one of hope. Hope concerning the issues we face in our communities. I pray as a church we can face these issues confidently. Issues like homelessness, the orphans, the widows, abortion, and suicide, to just name a few. This world is waiting on the hope that we carry. The hope that only you, walking in your God-given assignment, can provide. As Christians, we are called to influence our communities. We carry the answers to the issues that we face, and we bring clarity to confusion because we have access to the heart and mind of God, which means we can know God's thoughts and plans for us and the world around us. God says in Proverbs 21.3, to do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. When we are faced with these issues in our community, are we just? Do we act righteous? Do we show mercy to those in need? Are we like the good Samaritan who will stop and invest time, money, and whatever else it takes to help the one in need and give them hope? God says in James 2.13, for judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. We carry the hope and compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the world desperately needs it. When we walk in our assignment God has for us, it saves lives. My prayer for every person here at Bell Buckle United Methodist Church is that you spend time alone with God and ask him, who is your assignment? For some of you, it is the orphans. For others, it's the widows. For some of you, it is the homeless. For others, it is the issue of abortion. And for some, it is to share the hope that you carry to someone who has lost all hope and the will to live. Whoever God is calling you to, ask him to help you fall in love with them and to lay down your life for them. That is exactly what Jesus is telling us to do, to lay down our life for the sake of others. Jesus says in Matthew 25, 35, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you come to me. Truly, I tell you, if you do it to one of the least of these, you do it to me. Jesus gave this assignment to his bride. My vision for Bell Buck United Methodist Church is that by the year 2024, we will have thriving ministries to fulfill the needs of this community and beyond. Whatever your ministry is, bring it here so we can help you succeed in it. We can help you and your ministry grow. By the year 2024, this church will be home to multiple ministries run by individuals who have fallen in love with people in God's assignment for their life. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. What a tremendous vision, and I share that with him as well. I want to continue to thank our church for your continued gifts and support in your tithes and your offerings. Thank you so much, and we appreciate that as we continue to move forward. Before our message is brought, let's have some beautiful music. I like to say beautiful because I, I love music, and uh, I'm so proud of our praise team as they've stepped up at this time of the, uh, the virus and not being able to be here. They've done a tremendous job of uh, stepping in, and I so much appreciate each and every one of them. Let's have our music. Just as I
thank uh, Pastor Nolan for uh, honoring me and allowing me to speak today. Uh, I hope he and uh, uh, Miss Gay are enjoying a week of vacation. Uh, I want to get right to the, the word this morning, and I'm going to be bouncing around just a little bit, but uh, give you a number of different uh, scriptures, and we, we can post these later, so if you don't want to try to keep up, that's, that's fine. Uh, the, I just want to read uh, one verse to begin with before we get too far. And Jesus in the 14th chapter of John in verse 27 said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. a good scripture for today especially with what all is going on in the world I can just tell you I don't have to tell you you already know the world's in a mess uh, and we're accustomed to seeing tragedies in isolated locations but right now uh, with the pandemic it's worldwide it's everywhere uh, people uh, it's it's novel it's new it's unique we've in our lifetime we've never faced anything like this before and the result is for the last couple of months, everybody's been kind of quarantined or at home. Uh, you know, uh, Jason, you did a beautiful job of laying out the vision of what all we're supposed to be reaching out and doing. The only problem is, go you into all the world turned into go you into the kitchen <laughs> and preach. Uh, uh, we've been kind of limited on what we can do. Uh, and the result of that is... There's a lot of mental stress and a lot of uh, frustration that's going on in the world today, and particularly uh, uh, acute because of, of this. So today, I want to uh, give you a message of peace from the Lord. I want you to have peace in your life. Uh, it's interesting, uh, uh, I, I don't necessarily follow the liturgical uh, 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 calendar or anything else, but... Pastor Nolan gave me the scriptures for the sixth week of Easter. Uh, two or three different scriptures that we could pick from, one of which is that uh, scripture that I just read from John. And uh, in, in the scripture, uh, he lays out, uh, if you don't know what the sixth week of Easter is, if you stop and remember the resurrection took place, and, and then... Jesus was seen by people for about 40 days and then after that Pentecost so we're in this in between time between the resurrection and between the day of Pentecost and so uh, what Jesus said to them let me read out of Acts the first chapter for just a minute he said after his suffering he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive he appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them 
this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my Father, for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the time or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power. Listen to this. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The ministries that Jason was sharing are a direct result of being empowered by God the Father through the Holy Spirit for us to be successful. Now I'm going to read a couple more scriptures here. And I'm, I'm not even going to give you where they are. They're scattered around, but they're all out of John the 14th, 15th, or 16th chapter. Here's what Jesus said before his crucifixion. If you love me, you will obey what I command. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you the next one's in the 15th chapter verse 26 when the counselor comes whom I will send to you from the father the spirit of truth who goes out from the father he will testify about me and you will also and you also must testify for you have been with me from the beginning later on in the chapter he says but I tell you the truth it is for your good your good that I'm going away Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment in regard to sin. Uh, he goes on, and then later on in the chapter, he says, I have, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But he, when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. And then back to the 14th chapter, he says this. All this I have spoken while, while still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. And then comes the verse that I read before. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives, but do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Let's pray. Father, your word is inspired. From the beginning it was inspired and it comes to us today inspired. Open our ears and our hearts so that we can hear what you have for us today, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. One of the things, if you have kids, that you've been saying for the last two months is, wash your hands. <laughs> wash your hands. Have you washed your hands? This morning, Caitlin went out with Emma to give the new kitten some water, and when Emma came back in, she said to Caitlin, Caitlin, wash your hands. Wash your hands. You know, I wonder why we keep saying, wash your hands. You know why? Because it's important. Why did Jesus say over and over, you need to wait until you're empowered with the power from on high. You need to wait until we, God sends the Holy Spirit. You need to wait. He said it over and over, and like I said, you can read it all in John 14, 15, and 16. Uh, how many times that he talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit and that's why he said you know to the even after his resurrection he had already shown himself and of course the disciples thought that the he was ushering in the new kingdom that the world was going to change well the world was going to change but not the way they thought he said wait till you receive the power from on high it, it's odd though in all of this talk about the Holy Spirit and the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. He then stops kind of right in the middle of all this talk about the Holy Spirit and says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. So my question to you today, 
is that do you have peace in your life? There's a lot of stress in the world normally. And yet I believe that God by his Holy Spirit dwelling in us can give us peace. Now we can, so my question is, are you allowing the Holy Spirit to bring peace in your life? We can, we can get sidetracked here about the coming of the Holy Spirit and the day of Pentecost and we can get into doctrinal issues about what the evidence of the infilling or the baptism in the Holy Spirit is. We can get all sidetracked in that. I don't want to get sidetracked in that. I want to stay on the things that you and I and everybody that's listening to this can agree on. And that is that Paul in the fifth chapter of, his, uh, of Galatians said you can, your life can be full of the works of the flesh or it can be the fruits of the Spirit. And, and, and I, would, I would say to you that the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life should be producing the fruits of the Spirit. That should be part of the evidence of his infilling or his baptism. Love, joy, peace. There it is. There's peace again. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness and self-control pretty strong list I won't get into the works of the flesh you know what they are <laughs> pretty obvious Paul then also to writing to the church at Corinth says that the the presence of the Holy Spirit is not only to bring those things in your life but also to edify the church or to build up the church and to that end he gives the gifts of the Spirit wisdom knowledge faith healing miraculous powers prophecy discerning of spirits different kinds of tongues and interpretations of tongues all of those things should be active in the church they're part of God's gift of the Holy Spirit to empower us to be effective for him but I today I want to just kind of back up a bit and focus on one thing do you have peace in your life there is a reason that we are often ineffective in our evangelism in my opinion the world sometimes looks at us and says boy I hope that's not contagious <laughs> I hope I'm not catching that because they don't want to be like us if we're living our life in constant chaos and constant drama and constant turmoil then the world looks at us and says I don't want to be that way do you have peace in your life I'm not a, I'm not a Greek scholar I'm not any kind of a scholar actually uh, but I am smart enough to look up what words mean. The, that word peace in the Greek means tranquility or harmony. Listen to this. It means the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ, so fearing nothing from God, and content with its earthly lot, whatever sort that is. Now, I can tell you that's a pretty tough pill to swallow if you are listening to what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit wants you to have peace no matter what the circumstances of your life are right now. And I think it is a decision on your part. You are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, well, Elijah, you, you know, I'd have peace, but you just don't know my wife. <laughs> or... I'd have peace if uh, you just don't know my husband. You don't know my family. You don't know my boss. Listen, I, I, I don't, we're not going there. I can just tell you we're not, we're not going there. You know why? Because Jesus Christ, through his Holy Spirit dwelling in you, can give you peace whatever your circumstances are, and you need to claim that. You need to, you need to ask for the Holy Spirit to bring that peace to your life. Listen, I've said this often, and 
uh, you, you need to learn this important thing here. You, there are a lot of things that God has made provisions for you in your life, but if you walk away from them and do not embrace them, he will not force them on you. He's not going to force peace on you. 1992, my father was tragically killed in a motorcycle on his way to uh, Alaska. He was by himself. My mother uh, was living in Missouri. She called and said, your daddy's been killed. And my mom went through a normal grieving process. And, you know, about a year later, I, I was commenting to her. I said, Mom, I just want you to know how proud I am of you uh, because you've, uh, you've gone on with your life. You, you seem happy and uh, uh, you're productive and you, you haven't let Dad's uh, sudden death destroy your life. And she said, Elijah... I get up every day and decide that I'm going to be happy. Folks, let me tell you something about peace. You need to decide to be happy. It's a decision. And peace in your life, you can, you can wrap yourself in drama and, and gossip and, and you can, you, if you want to, but it's a decision for you to allow the Holy Spirit to bring peace to your life. I used to listen to country music all the time. I'm more of an NPR guy today. <laughs> uh, but uh, there's, I did listen the other day. There's a new country song out. The title of it is, Ain't Nothing That a Beer Can't Fix. That's right, that's what I said. Ain't nothing that a beer can't fix. Well, you know that scripture that I read earlier said that when the Holy Spirit Hill comes... He'll guide you into all truth. <laughs> I can tell you that song ain't right. That ain't true. <laughs> what did Jesus say? I give you peace. My peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives. You understand? Not as the world gives. Listen, there's a lot of people that are looking for peace in the wrong place. I, look, I'm not... You can have a beer. I don't care what you do. That's not... If you, if you think I'm... I'm advocating that or preaching against that. I, that's not the point. The point is, don't look in the wrong place for your peace. It comes with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. That's where it comes. I don't care what is happening with COVID-19 and uh, coronavirus and all the problems that go with it. And listen, there are many. I, I heard, I think there's 36 million people unemployed. That is a problem. You know what? You know what Jesus said, though? Jesus said, watch the sparrows. <laughs> Look at them. God will provide. And even in tough times, and our, uh, listen, this nation and uh, your family and my family have been through tough times before. Don't allow it to rob you of your peace. He went on to say, let not your heart be troubled. Now, the Greek word for that, troubled, means to agitate by moving to and fro. To agitate. Now here in the South, we call that a tizzy. <laughs> you know, grandma's in a tizzy today. <laughs> That's because the grandkids have done, you know, grandson was out mowing the, fly, mowing the yard and mowed down all of her flowers. She's in a tizzy. Tossed to and fro. But listen to this, what else it means it is a troubled, the word troubled is a condition of the mind to perplex the mind by suggesting doubt. If you want peace in your life, then you're going to have to be aware that the enemy of our soul is constantly going to be tr trying to bring doubt into our lives. And, and if you allow that to live there, then you, you're, you're, well, that's, this is right. God's going to take care of me. Well, no, I look around and maybe it's not exactly, things aren't exactly how I hoped they'd be. Well, I'm, I'm over this side, that side. Stop being tossed to and fro in your mind and settle on the fact that God is faithful and that he will see you through. Allow peace to reign in your life. And then finally he said, don't be afraid. Now look that word up, afraid, in the Greek. Once again, I'm not a Greek scholar, but like I said, I can look words up. It, I, it's real interesting what this word afraid means in the Greek. You know what it means? 
It means afraid. <laughs> That's what it means. It's not complicated. The word simply means afraid. Some of you are afraid today. Jesus said, don't be afraid. He said, to let not your heart be troubled. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. His peace is available. But like I said, God's not going to force it on you. You have to recognize, uh, listen, uh, Brother Ivan in our Sunday school class a couple of weeks ago did a beautiful job of reminding us that the Holy Spirit is a real person. There is God the Father, there is God the Son, and there is God the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't say, now you wait in Jerusalem until I come back. That's not what he said. He said, you wait till you be endued with power from on high and the Holy Spirit comes to live in you and to be with you. The Holy Spirit wants to give you peace in your life, but you need to embrace it. Get up and decide that you're going to not be troubled, not to and fro, not thinking one, uh, well, this ain't going to work out. Uh, have have it, uh, a life of faith and confidence that God's going to see you through. It's, in, it's important. Come, Holy Spirit, I need thee. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in thy strength and thy power. David could sing with me. Come in thine own special way. Let the Holy Spirit come and, and give you peace in your life today. Jesus said, Come all of you that are weary and heavy laden and what? I will give you rest. Find the peace of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, let us embrace all that you have for us. And today, allow us to possess in our lives every day, instead of chaos and drama and uh, bickering and trouble, let us embrace your, your peace that the Holy Spirit is bringing. And if we do, we will then be empowered to reach out to all of those around us that... Uh, uh, to a world that's hurting. As Jason laid out the vision for our, our church, let us be powered by the Holy Spirit so that we can accomplish all that you've got for us. I ask all of this in your precious name. Amen.